What is going on, 49ers fans? I, I, I'm very happy to be going live right now. was not planning on it. I know it's very, very early. I know a lot of people are at work. It's my spring break, so I get to jump on here. The 49ers made a huge signing. Um, now, some people are going to say maybe a minor signing here, but they go out and they get Edge Kamiko Turi. Now, this is a guy that I've liked for a long time. You know, he was in the 2018 draft class. And the whole goal of this episode is let's figure out who he is. Um, I've got my draft profile that I wrote back in 2018 before the draft on him. So we'll go through that, go through some of the stats, what his role for the 49ers will be, and just kind of look at kind of what this fit is. Because make no mistake, the 49ers were high on this kid in the draft. He ended up going in the second round out of Rutgers to the Colts. Um, he was picked number 52 overall, but the 49ers had him in on an official visit before the NFL draft. And so th this isn't the first connection. It's not the second connection. They had him in earlier during the free agency, whenever it just started uh, for a full visit, you know, a, a all kinds of different negotiating, whatever, but they finally decide to move forward and get this deal done. Now, we don't know the terms of the deal. What we do know is it's a one-year deal, which the 49ers seem to always do this with pass rushers. They want that quality depth on the outside, and if they hit big, then they can go off, get signed, and you get that compensation pick. Now, uh, let's jump back now, okay, and let's talk about – what it is that he brings, what what he brought to the NFL. This is my 2018 uncut <laughs> draft write-up before he ever played one snap in the pro. And, you know, I'm working currently on finalizing my draft book for this year. And good Lord, um, had a lot of help, but we still got a ways to go. I'm hoping to get that done this weekend. Uh, the entire spring break process was just devoted to this book, and I'm almost done. Uh, that's going to be available on Patreon. If you want to get um, access to that, just it, it's anybody that supports us on fr Patreon, you get it automatically. So it's really the only place I'm not really selling it. It's just an added benefit for my Patreon subscribers. If you're not a Patreon subscriber, draft time is the best time. Not only uh, can you check out all the prospects that are up right now, but you get the draft book, which is, I think it's 75 pages currently, and we're still adding to it. Um, and then once we draft players, that's where all my breakdowns and all of their game film is going to be on over there. So just 49ers Patreon, Google it. Um, we're the first one that pulls up, or you can go to patreon.com slash 49ers Rush Podcast. We are there as well. So uh, go check that out. If you don't like it, 100% money back guaranteed as always. Now, here is my 2018 write-up on Kamiko Turi. Okay, again, I haven't changed it. Out of Rutgers, 6'5", 253. He ran a 4'6", 40-yard dash. Okay, so speed's decent, not great. Um, now, his family came over from Guinea when he was three years old. He's only played two years of high school football, so he was a very raw prospect coming out. Um, but he had a lot of upside. He went through back-to-back -back shoulder surgeries his junior year in college, but seemed fully recovered. And I think a, a big reason why there were so many draft visits with him um, whenever that was going on was just medical checks, things like that. Um, then here we go. The athleticism is there, but a lack of pass rush moves makes him easy to block. Um, he is a potential player that someone will take a chance on. He will be a special teams contributor that has already blocked three kicks in college. Um, and again, he'll be coached up into an edge player. Now, he kind of found his role. That's the end of my 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 player comp for him was Kamali Correa, Correa um, but with less production, and that kind of fit very very well. Now, if I went over and I looked up his combine metrics, uh, and again, we're talking Kamiko Turi, the newest 49er. 6'4 and 5'8. All right, that's 70, 70th percentile of an edge rusher. Weight 253. All right, 22nd percentile. He's a little bit light there, but that's okay. Wingspan was 80 inches, not too bad. Arm length 33, hand size 958, all those things. Here are his athletic comparisons um, on mockdraftable.com. You like basically enter in all the things that they measured at. His it, Justin Smith. Uh, that is the physical build. They have a 91% match rate. Justin Cowboy Smith. Now, does he play like Justin Smith? He does not. Uh, <laughs> but the athletic makeup, the body style, the length, all those things, the speed, 
that's what it looks like he brings to the table. I mean, that that's where he is. Now let, let's talk about what he's done. He's been with the Colts for four years. He played out his entire rookie contract with them. Um, he had 12 career sacks. Now he's coming off his best year. So he's projecting forward. And, you know, you kind of look at what he was able to do just last year. Five and a half sacks. That was his best that he's had all year. He played in 13 games. He's not a starter, though. He is a situational pass rush guy only. But just if you're looking at just last year, just 2021, he did this in 13 games. Five and a half sacks. Um, he had five tackles for loss, eight additional quarterback hits. Not too bad. One fumble recovery. So he's a spot guy. He's a depth guy that fills a role. Um, the 49ers have a lot of edge players, though. Where is he going to fit into that? Because you can't keep everybody. <laughs> we now have 13 defensive linemen under contract. Now, I'm assuming this is a relatively cheap deal, one-year deal with incentives. That's what we do in these one-year deals. It's going to be the same thing that basically Kerry Hyder got. Low on the guarantees, and we're trying to get this guy to bet him bet on himself. I, I don't need to see the numbers to tell you that. I'm telling you right now that's what this contract is very low guarantee might not we might even get a full-on veteran um cap exemption it might not even count against the cap you usually get a few of those a year so you, you know we'll have to see where the numbers are but i promise you this is low not going to affect really the cap really at all when it's all said and done but if he hits those incentives then that'd be good for him he'll get he'll get cashed he'll get cashed out um now, if we and again, let's go back to the edges that we have. Right, our starters. Uh, you, you look at obviously Bosa, then Samson Ebukam. Those are kind of your starters. Now, behind that, here's my depth chart. Charles Aminihu would be three, right? Carry on Hyder would be four. Justin Willis would be five. And now you're going right here, number six, Kamiko Ture, and he's just going to be a pass rusher. That's a lot of depth there. How does this affect the draft? Yeah, I saw somebody through this uh, in the chat earlier. Uh, here we go, Sean. Yeah, I say we move up from sixty-one to get an edge rusher. Does this affect that? I don't think it does. Kamiko Ture is extra depth at the premier position for the 49ers, what they value the most. But I don't think this excludes them from doing really anything in the second, third round, whatever. Uh, Coach Cruz says this makes it easier to go wide receiver at 61. Maybe it does. And this is what what's the 49ers entire mentality whenever they're going into the draft. They want their roster filled to where, hey, we've got our roster. Now let's get better at those positions. Kamiko Ture, this signing one year deal should have nothing to do. Absolutely nothing to do with your draft strategy. That's just my own personal take. Does it make it easier to go best player available? Yes, it does. But again, long-term plan, this guy's probably not going to be there. I hope he balls out and plays into a starting role and all those things. But if we're being realistic, this is a 26-year-old guy with 12 sacks over four years. He is a depth edge piece that will be a situational pass rusher. That's it. Um, and, and I think that it, I, I'm with you, Kyle. This is an exciting move. It's a smart move. It's a great depth move. And on top of that, golly, man, if I was an edge guy, I want to play for the 49ers. We get everybody paid. This dude did a one year prove it deal. And so, man, I, I love it. I, I, it's a good signing. It's a smart signing. Is it a splash signing? No. Is it going to, you know, shake up the power rankings? No. But when you're in week seven and the 49ers, you know, are <laughs> playing, you know, we've got an injury or two on the edge. That's where this guy's going to make his bread and butter. That's when we're going to feel the impact. He's not going to change anything week one, uh, but he gives us way more depth for when we get on our heels because we have so many injuries. NFL 100% injury league. That's where this will shine. Tommy says, who the hell is the starter <laughs> opposite Bosa on edge? You look at the snap count rates, it's 100% Samson. But Charles Ominihue, man, uh, that is the one that I would be keeping my eye on. I'm very, very excited for what he did. I know he played limited snaps, but he came in midseason. Um, and, man, he flashed. When he was in there, he flashed. And so that's one of the ones I, I, I think 
it's going to be big. I love it. Vicky says, huge signing, John. LOL. It, it's big because, again, look at what this team values. What does this team value? Edge over everything. Edge over everything. Again, this is a second-round talent guy that we're getting in here, and I'm excited about it. Uh, I, I am. I, I think that these are good things. Now, let, let me say this one more time, and th this is going to be a short episode. I just wanted to get on and just kind of share my thoughts for what this means. The 49ers will still continue to pursue edge, and if you look at their draft day visits that they have had, nine, they only get 30, nine uh, that have been leaked to the press are edge guys. So, and most of those are second and third round targets. So they're still going to look edge. Doesn't mean they'll go there depending on how that board falls. But what this signing probably tells me more than anything is that the 49ers can trade up even easier now because every single mock draft that I do, and I've got a bunch, you can go back and look through YouTube for those. Um, edge is such a priority. And I think it still is. But now that late round edge, maybe not near as much. So instead of, you know, getting a situational pass rusher in round six, which I don't like, I really like spending early picks on edge guys if you're going to get edge guys. Now you have even more of a way to trade up because, again, how is a six round, you know, situational pass rusher guy, developmental guy, seventh round, going to beat out Kamiko Ture uh, on this roster? That's one of the quotes that we've heard John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan say so many times whenever they drafted the punter, right? Mitch Wisnowski in the fourth round, uh, immediately after the press conference. They're like, well, we were, were looking at the board and we couldn't find a player that we thought could beat out any of our current guys on our team. And so that's why we went with the punter because we thought he could make the team and he could make us better, right? And I'm paraphrasing, but that's the idea. So now if we put the 49ers, it's sixth round where we have those two back-to-back -back picks. I think it's 20. Let me, let me, here we go. Yeah, 20 and two, 220 and 221. So let's say you're sitting there and you're just like, man, there's no edge guys here that can beat out Kamiko Ture or Jordan Willis. I think those are kind of the bottom two guys. They play completely different positions even though they're edge guys jordan willis much more of a base heavy bodied whatever and then you got kimiko turi is going to be a little bit more of a pass rushing specialist but if they can't beat those guys out you only keep 10 you only keep 10 now we got 13 d line guys you usually only keep 10 on your initial 53 man roster so it, it's 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 going to be tight guys it's going to be tight but there's nothing wrong with that um anyway you guys are awesome. Appreciate you guys. I just wanted to jump on real quick and just share my thoughts on this. 49ers got better. They got better depth. Uh, is this going to change, you know, the win-loss totals in Vegas? Hell no. That's not what it is. But this is another player that will bring balance and depth to the defensive line, which the 49ers value the most. I'm happy, man. Uh, welcome to the 49ers, Kamiko. And, uh, man, this is fun. Appreciate it, guys.